Okay, so now that we've covered the basics, I wanna take a step back and take a look at the importing and exporting process in our next two videos. So for this one, I'm gonna talk about preparing your model for importing into Substance Painter because in lots of cases, the model will be created in another application and there's a little bit of prep work that needs to go in ahead of time before you bring it into Substance Painter. So for this example with our Ballman character, I'm gonna take a look at it inside of uh, Autodesk's Maya. Inside of Autodesk's Maya, you see we've got the same character here. Uh, as you're familiar with those individual geometry masks, those are broken out between the body, the laces, the shoes. So that's all just set up and how it was created. Nothing special needs to go on there. There's really only two things that you need to worry about. Uh, number one are your UV layout. We talked about UVs a little bit as being this um, tool that allow, you know, allows you to lay everything out flat in the zero to one space, creating little islands, things like that um, for your, your pieces of geometry. Each individual software kind of handles UV unwrapping their own way. There's also really powerful tools that can uh, help you in that process that are plugins and things like that. So, uh, but just know that, that that process will need to be handled in the uh, software that, that the model was created. And since Painter doesn't have the ability to customize UVs, you can create automatic UVs if you, if you don't want to uh, customize anything by hand, but if you wanted to handcrafted UVs, it needs to be done in the software that, that it was uh, created or that you're working in. So the other big thing is setting up your texture set. So again, you know, we talked about here, we've got our different um, designations for the different parts that are based on the geometry. But let's say that we actually, you know, we've got this whole body isolated as one big thing. Let's say we actually wanted to uh, create some texture sets where that's broken out. Or, you know, like we've got the shoes and laces as two different things. Maybe we want to make a texture set or texture set list up here that actually has them all together. How would we go about doing that? Well, inside of Maya here, it's actually really easy. And this is totally replicable in any other 3D application. Basically what you need to do is you need to apply shaders to the individual components that you want to be in a texture set. So this particular case, like let's say we wanted the shoes and laces to all be in one texture set. It's no problem. I would just right click, say assign new material, and it does not matter the type of material that I apply to it. In this particular case, I'm just gonna apply a basic Lambert and for my own visualization, I'm just gonna make them bright red so I can see what's in what texture set. Again, none of that matters, but something that does matter is what that shader group is named. And in this case, I'm just gonna call it shoes. Call it shoes. What about TS for texture set? Awesome. Okay, now for the rest of this, we wanna put the rest of the body of this part. Oh, that's actually interesting. So let's say we wanted these hearts down here on the shoes to be a part of it, but you can see that they're connected to the belly button heart. So instead what we wanna do is I wanna select just these faces because they're all part of the same geometry. And I'm gonna say, go ahead and um, apply this existing materials of shoes texture set to those as well. And now you can see that those are red. And for the rest of the body, we wanna make that a, uh, a blue color, right? Or so just, it, again, it doesn't matter. Uh, but we just want to create a new texture set for that. So I'm going to say, apply a new Lambert. We'll make that blue. And we'll call this one body texture set. And again, same thing with this belly button. Uh, it doesn't work to select the geometry. So I have to select the individual faces. And then just say, apply the existing body texture set there. All right, cool. All right, great. So now you can see we've got two different texture sets. Uh, or two different shaders apply to each one. Now, all you have to do is export it. So you do the file, um, export all. You just wanna export it as any of the file types that Substance would accept. So in this case, you know, I'll just throw it on my desktop here. We're gonna export it as a, um, we'll say ball man, and we'll just do an FBX and export. Again, it could be FBX, could be OS, uh, OBJ, could do USD exporting, depending on what software you're using. And I just wanna, uh, export that just say ball man from there now I've shown you how you can go to file new and import a new object but let's say I wanted to update an existing model in here you can totally do that as well uh, for that I can just say edit project configuration and then under this file I would just change this to my desktop 
and find this ball man from there and then click open now th does this work to update any model to anything absolutely not if you've already got like hand painted stuff on there uh and you adjust the uvs uh all that's going to get messed up because the everything will be in the same spot but if you're updating like like something like we're doing here um where it's say a new um a new version of the exact same model without the uvs adjusted or anything like that it'll work just fine so i can update that and now you can see up here we've got our body and shoes separate which is great because now we've got different layer stacks for each so let's say i wanted to make the body pure brass and the shoes i wanted to make a fabric material and we will just use the uh the the this terry cloth fabric down there and you can see when i drag and drop them on there it actually will go ahead and put those and assign them to the the hearts and the hearts get separated the, the way that we want so it's not just doing it within the uh, geometry that was created you, you can break through that and set it up your own way now when we go to export these they'll actually export a separate texture maps if we want that can be imported into maya so let's talk about that in the next step. Let's talk about exporting this out and being used in a third-party application next.